first question, uh, you know, post-mortem on the Rybovich vote? Um, you know, I think uh, I'm, I'm, I wasn't surprised that it got passed. I expected that it would. Um, I think there are still some questions to be asked, and um, the it'll be at least a couple of months before it comes back for second reading. And I think as they proceed during that time, they'll continue to work with the neighborhood to address the issues that that the, some of the neighbors continue to have. And when it comes back, it, it will be. Um, We'll see what it looks like. The, uh, <coughs> excuse me, in all the chapel meetings, I think it was 20 something hours <laughs> total, every time the room was packed, there were people in the overflow. There were people this week who were very passionate about the aesthetics of this massive project, but it wasn't the same size crowd. Um, why do you think that was? I think it's directly related to the outreach that Rybovich and Related have been doing for the last eight, six, eight, ten months. They've had numerous neighborhood meetings. They meet regularly with the Northwood Vision team. They've incorporated many of the uh, concerns that came up early on into their design. They just done, did an incredible amount of outreach to the community, and I think it's, that's directly related. And I think the other thing that I noticed specifically was that this is a very respectful crowd. Whether they agreed or disagreed with the um, um, proposal, they were very respectful. And I, I think it was really the, because the developers were very respectful of them and, and their opinions. And, and I think, you know, I think that, that Rybovich and Related can write a book <laughs> or, or a white paper on how to reach out to the community. They did such an excellent job. And what's one of the biggest questions you have right now that needs to be answered before this goes up for another book? Well, um, I, I, I'm not wild about those garage facades, and I would like to see what we can do with those to make those more interesting. Um, you know, I don't know that we need necessarily need retail. I'm not, um, I'm, I'm not a big, um, I'm not one of those, you have to put retail anywhere, because I see we've done that downtown and it hasn't always worked. But we need to do something to make it more attractive. Um, so that's one of the things that, um, I, I think the perimeter road, um, I would like to see that the entire perim perimeter road, well, to the extent that, that it can and still do business at Rybovich to have that road in place and the landscaping certainly on both the east and west sides of Flagler. Have they been open to as far as whenever you've come up with any concerns or anything like that as far as taking those concerns into consideration? Well, you know, they, they listen very closely to our planning department and what the planning department has recommended to them and you know, they've definitely take, taken that into consideration. And of course the neighbors. But the bottom line is that if they're approved, it will, it will represent a, a dramatic waiver of the city's density rules. And a lot of people don't like the precedent. They, they, a lot of people are saying flat out, if the, if the price is right, the city will roll over. Price That's not my words. For what? <laughs> no, we'll, 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 we'll break its own rules if, if you know. If it's a, if there's if it's a big enough deal, you know, and I think that's, and I know you talked about how you're not really breaking your rules. Yeah, and that's probably the biggest frustration that I have. People um, seem to think that we're doing this, um, or that we're breaking our rules, and you know, there it is built into the comprehensive plan that we can consider waivers based on certain criteria. Now, some of those criteria are in the eyes of the beholder, but but they're there. Uh, and we have the option to do that. Um, this still has to go before the state um, as part of the whole comprehensive plan review. Um, we're doing everything the way we should do. And, um, and, and the bottom line, um, the, um, the planning department makes a recommendation to the commission and it's ultimately the commission's decision. And real quickly, if, if Rybovich happens, there's a lot of promises and a lot of potential about how it's going to revitalize Broadway. You've said in the past you believe it will happen. Um, you know, you still you still feel pretty strongly that if this thing is built, that that area is going to be revitalized, and they want the city to be part of it too. Well, I think that they presented it very well as a three a three party um, uh, project between the city and Rybovich and uh, the neighborhoods, and and I think you need all three of those parties to make it successful. Um, and um, yeah, we're committed to it.
I have another one with Ryan Vich. Uh, no, I'm done with Ryan Vich. I, <laughs> I had another one unless you have one. Uh, just as far as the outlets one week away, uh, now I'm, I'm still new, obviously, but as far as uh, a rumor going around, I guess, that they may not open on time, what have you heard? Uh, do you believe they will open on time? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. We have a ribbon cutting at um, 9 o'clock on Friday the 14th, scheduled, ready to go. And as far as the city, just for the day of, it's going to be a huge day, obviously. What, what does the city have planned as far as traffic or anything like that? Yeah, um, we, we just uh, talked about this a little bit this morning. Um, in an earlier meeting, uh, the police are ready to go. They've got their tra traffic plan on how they're going to move traffic. Um, and they've been working closely with security uh, at, at uh, the new outlet center. And, um, yeah, our police will be out there. Anything new to report on the uh, flea market? I know that they're reaching, getting ready to reach a deadline to submit a plan for the code enforcement. Yeah, I don't have anything new. Okay. Uh, also, the uh, the commission discussed on Monday, it might have been actually during the CRA meeting, this idea of the 7th Street uh, Center. Square. 7th yeah. Street Square. Can you talk about that a little? Yeah, um, one of the um, items <coughs> in our strategic plan and the CRA strategic plan is to develop the intersection of Tamarind and 7th. And it's called 7th Street Square. And we're moving forward on that. That will include um, landscaping, some brick pavers to sort of delineate the, the square. Um, we own three, three of the four corners, I believe. Um, so we're looking at what we can put there. Um, one of the considerations uh, what, as we move forward is uh, do we want to put some resources in the community to help um, develop new businesses and um, Paragon and you know other like SCORE and small business and um, group, they're, they're available to support new businesses, help them write business plans, help them look at their financial situation. You know, um, should we put them right in the middle of uh, where we want to see new business sprout up? So that was the discussion about where do we want to place these people who want to be, who, who want to serve the city, especially in terms of building their new businesses. The, the frustration of, you know, decades of trying to get that, and, and a lot of times people have said, well, it doesn't take, it wouldn't take that much, it's just, it's very close. If, if we could just do this, we could do that, maybe, you know, the blight would, would improve. And, and um, something like this, obviously, is not going to be a panacea, but uh, I'm guessing that's a priority for you because it's so close to downtown. Oh, uh, Tamarind and Rosemary both are priorities for us and for the CRA. This year, I think we have allotted in the CRA budget $2 million um, for the Northwest. Um, uh, so we're really focusing on getting, uh, making it safe, um, getting more businesses in there, um, making it more attractive, um, trying to increase home ownership, uh, and uh, that's definitely our priority and it's in our strategic plan. Anything else? Anything else? Uh, maybe one other thing I, I know we talked about a little bit before, just started as uh, potentially in the south end of the city. Uh, maybe an increase in break-ins there. I know that's a community that's very organized and, and uh, certainly seems to have its ducks in the row uh, in a row. Have they talked to you about that at all and just your comment? Oh, um, we've talked to them about it. <laughs> One of the things that we've instituted in our police department is intelligence-led policing. Um, so we watch the data. We, uh, our police uh, department reviews the data on a regular basis. They know where the hot spots are. Of course, the citizens in our last um, <coughs> South End meeting uh, brought it up as well. Um, so what we've done, what the police department has done, is notify the residents that there's been a spike. Um, they have given them some tips on how to keep your house safe. Um, make sure your doors are locked. Uh, make sure your alarm's on if you have an alarm. And I'm one of the biggest defenders there. Um, so, um, um, and, and, and the best news of all is we've already arrested five people um, that have been implicated in um, uh, burglaries on the South End. So. How recently were those arrests? Um, the at end of January, January 30th, I know we're a couple and, um, yeah. So, you know, we've, there's a 
If you go to our police web page, there are tips on how to keep your house safe. Um, double lock your doors, use your deadbolts, um, trim your trees, make sure there's not bushes covering places where people can hide. Be careful. Anything else? Okay, thank you.